So this first one's going to be the a chi-square test. For, now you can use two terms. They use two terms in different books all the time. You could call this either a chi-square test for independence. I like using the term chi-square test for association. The reason for that is because when we're doing any type of hypothesis test, the null hypothesis about, is about things being the same or not different at all, equal to zero like we did for match pairs, equal to something else, the proportions being equal. Basically, that nothing's been changed. So if things that aren't inter interesting, those are things that have no association. We're interested in finding an association. So I like using the, the, word, the term chi-square test for association because that corresponds to what the alternative hypothesis is going to be. If I call this a chi-square test for independence, I'm not really doing a test for independence because the null hypothesis is that they're independent. So, I mean, they do use that term. You can use that term, but you got, just got to remember that our alternative hypothesis is about there being a relationship or about there being an association. So, right away, we know the key word to know that we're using a chi-square test for association. The key words we're looking for are, we're looking for association. We see that word. We know we're using a chi-square test for association. What key word is in this one? That's correct, related. <laughs> I thought I heard it from somebody. It was maybe the mouse. Just kidding, there's no mouse. Um, surmising one time, my wife was in the, in the kitchen, not in this house, it was a previous house, and a mouse ran right over her barefoot. I think she might have kicked it into the ceiling. It was pretty, it was pretty intense. Okay, um, I just, I just, Remember, this is on video. Um, so related, <laughs> related is the key word. So we see the words like association, related, relationship. Um, those are key words telling us we're going to use a chi-square test for association. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is write our hypothesis. Now, our null and alternative hypothesis for chi-square tests for association Sometimes you'll also see this as a chi-squared two-way test. You might see that referenced in a stats book or in, um, in a calculator. So I just want to make sure you understand that that's what we're talking about. So our hypotheses are all going to be in words. So no variables in this case. So remember what I told you just a second ago, our null hypothesis is going to be that there is no relationship or there is no association, or I could say that the two variables are independent. So I'm going to write that out. Um, hair color is not related to eye color for girls. Now you can call those independents. You can say hair color and eye color are independent. Or you can say there is no association between hair color and eye color for girls. And I just want to mention that because it might look a little different depending on the context that I give you um, on your homework lab or test. So what would be our alternative hypothesis? Correct. Is related, right. Hair color is related to eye color for girls. Yep, easy, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, what's next? Okay. Conditions. Oh, yeah. So our first condition is that we've taken a random sample. That's what it says right here, so we're good. We're just going to repeat that. Random sample of 100 girls.
Our second condition is that, um, you know, 100 girls is less than 10% of all girls and that our data are in counts here. We don't want any decimals within our data. So we're just going to say, we're going to go and say 100 girls Ten percent of all girls and our data are in counts. Um, you could also use the independence condition, but I don't know. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if it's okay to make the assumption that each girl is independent, like each girl's hair color and eye color is independent of every of another girl, because if the girls are related, they might not be independent. So I think we're gonna settle with the less than 10%. Okay, here's the third one. Here is the part that makes this different. Isn't it nice that there's really only gonna be two differences between, um, in terms of the work, uh, between our chi-squared goodness of fit and our chi-squared independence? So far, the only difference has been our hypothesis, right? Everything else has been the same. So this is the only part that's a little bit different. Um, we still have the same condition. Expected values or counts are greater than or equal to 5. Now, we have to show this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make an expected value chart. Okay? So we're going to we're basically going to copy down that chart. Notice this is observed frequencies. So we're going to go and say expected frequencies. And we're going to copy down this chart, brown, blue, light hair, dark hair. Just don't copy in the values, okay? Okay, so there's a formula to determine the expected values. Yes? That's just the rule. They have to be bigger than 5. Okay, so the formula for expected value. The expected value or the expected count is the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. Okay? So for instance, for light hair, for light hair brown eyes, we're going to go up to our table. Light hair has a row total of 43. Brown eyes has a column total of 54. So I'm going to do 43 times 54 divided by the grand total, which in this case was 100. And that's going to be my expected value. So go ahead right now and calculate the rest of the expected values using the same method I just did. Okay, so now that we've got our expected values, we're going to go ahead and do our next part, which is our mechanics. The first thing we need is our degrees of freedom. Now, the degrees of freedom for a chi-squared two-way table, it's not, remember the degrees of freedom for goodness of fit was categories minus one. This one's going to be columns minus 1 times rows minus 1. So 
So how many columns do we have? Two. And rows? Two. So we've got two minus one times two minus one, which is one degree of freedom. And then we're going to calculate our chi-squared at one degree of freedom. And remember that the chi-squared is the sum of the observed minus the expected squared divided by expected, right? So we're just going to do that same process we did before with the goodness of fit. So we're going to do the observed, which is 10. Okay, I get that from here. Minus the corresponding expected value, which is right here. 23.22. I'm going to square that and divide that by 23.22. Yeah, you guys good with that? Make sense? Then what are we going to do? We're going to add that to what? Let's go 33 minus 19.78 squared divided by 19.78. Calculator, or we don't have something to uh, to use like a you know, GeoGebra or some sort of program, then we're going to need a rejection region, all right? So we're going to find the rejection region by looking at our chi-squared table with one degree of freedom and an alpha level of 0 0.05. I didn't mention that that was going to be our alpha level. Oh, I did. I did. Actually, actually I said point, I said 10%, so not 0 0.05. This is going to go 0 0.10. Okay, we're going to put greater than or equal to because that's always what happens for a rejection region. So go ahead and look in your chi-squared table for one degree of freedom at 0 0.1 significance level. Right there. 2.706, yes. Here's the alpha level. There's degrees of freedom. 2.706. Is 28.7 a lot greater than 2.706? I would say so. If we look in the table um, at one degree of freedom, I mean, even way out here, it's only 7.8. So 28 is huge in this case. So now I'm going to make my conclusion. Since the chi-squared value of 28.7 is in the rejection region. There is strong evidence and then we just repeat what we had for our alternative hypothesis that hair color is related to eye color for girls. And that's it. There we go. There's a chi-square test for association. I want to remind you that in your conclusion, never put the null hypothesis, okay? Your, your conclusion is always going to be based upon your alternative hypothesis. So you're either going to have evidence of your alternative, 
or you're not going to have evidence of your alternative. All right, you're never going to have evidence of your null because we know you're not supposed to accept that. Okay, so there we go. Chi squared test for association. What do you guys think? Yeah, okay, not too bad. There's not much more that we've done except for um, we've done this the same. The chi squared, finding the chi squared value is the same. We still did the rejection region. Um, the only differences here are our degrees of freedom, our, our expected value chart that we have, and our hypothesis.